Right. And you can set different transport rules. Let's just go to the company disclaimer. You can set it if it's sent to an internal recipient, it's one thing. If it's sent external, something else. So usually I just leave it off. If it's internal, I append it if it's going out. Because a lot of internal mail, you'll get that appended on every one email. It gets kind of long. But anyway, uh, transport rules, check them out. But in this case, it was nice to limit everyone else and only allow the people that we want to send messages. Now, here's one problem. And this goes back to what I was talking about a few weeks ago when you got to go behind people who like to dig, dig in the server. I made this change for a client because he wanted only a few people to have larger limits. Mm -hmm. He knew enough to go and find what the limits were set to, the default limits. And he saw they were large for everybody. He saw the default was large. So he emails pretty much complaining. That's not what I told you to do. Y'all need to listen, blah, 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 blah. Really? Those words, huh? Kind of like that. Well, he didn't say blah, 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 blah. But, but he, you know, still, his, his the meaning behind it. it. Right. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, I'm trying to respond back professionally and trying to also to tell him that he doesn't know what he's talking about in a nice way. But that's the kind of thing you got to worry about. It, it, those kind of clients charge you more. Anyway, I told him. Charge you uh, more. <laughs> Definitely, definitely charge him more. Um, I told him, first asked, I, spread, I expressed concern that he was logging into the server at all and told him that it's hard for us to manage his server with too many hands in the server. I agree. I definitely agree. Then I told him that in order to re comply with his request, certain things have to be done. And that he was not seeing all of the steps and that if he wants me to explain it to him, we can set up a training session at the standard hourly rate to show him what was done. Something like that. I don't know exactly. And his answer was? And I, well, and I told him, have you tested it? Because it should be working correctly. You know, please feel free to test from accounts that should send large mails from who shouldn't. And please get back to me if you see something that's not working correctly. Um. About two weeks later, he replied back, seems to be working. That's all it was. Seems to be working. He didn't want to admit that it was working. Seems to be working. Well, good job. Yeah. Seems to, uh, seems to be. Okay. That's nice. Please don't touch it. Yeah, please. <laughs> I'm going to change the admin password every three hours just to ensure that uh, you can't yeah, log he, in. Well, he made his account an admin password. I mean, I, admin account on the server on the network. <sighs> So I told him again, that's not safe. You know, daily a user who's using the computer daily shouldn't have a network account. It can open up to viruses. Of blah, course, blah, blah. it's just best that. practice. And if you yeah. are out there and you are using your admin account as your main account, it's not best practice because you could do something damaging by mistake. And what's perfect? Right, because the the user's most famous quote is, "I don't even know. I don't even know enough to know how to do that." Mm -hmm. And my response is, well, if someone knew enough, they wouldn't do it. It's usually done by accident, not knowing what the call, what the effect is going to be. Oh, sure. I mean, just take the home users that some of us take care of. You have people that don't know how to compre uh, do certain tasks, but yet they have full-blown rights on their desktop or laptops. Hence, the viruses and all type of weird oddball Imagine the same people at the workplace on a workstation connecting to servers to servers and critical databases like exchange databases and critical information. Danger, I say, danger. Yeah, not to mention that administrators have full rights usually to all shares. Yes, and permissions are a big deal. Right, exactly. So, I mean, again, if you watch past shows or even if you've been a network admin for a long time, you know the dangers. Yep. And when I tell them that, a lot of times they say, oh, no, he can't have that. Because especially if it's not the owner, I say, why does he have network admin rights? Oh, well, he needs it to do his job. I said, well, included with that is he can look at all your personal files. Um, he can have access to your county files. He can delete your county files. He can Ooh. read your email. What? What? He can do what? Well, he's a network <laughs> administrator. Oh, no, that needs to be fixed. Uh, yes, I agree. Thank I, you. I think people get, <laughs> get confused with having administrative rights over their PC so they can install applications. Mm -hmm. So, 
Um, all right, real quick, the next thing, I'm not going to go into too much detail about what this is. I just thought it was very strange. Um, there's, there's a feature in Exchange, which I just learned about <laughs> this week. It's called Back Pressure. Uh, it's been around since Exchange 2007. And what it does is it senses the system resources. If they're insufficient in certain places, um, system processes running high, uh, just different things, Something, uh, some database logs, they get too big. Um, it will throttle exchange, meaning it, it will... There's two levels. Three. There's three levels of operation modes in exchange: normal or for back pressure. Normal back pressure, medium back pressure, high. Normal is what it should be at day to day. Everything's running fine. Medium is strange because you would get a call saying we can't get mail from external recipients, which by itself could be lots of things. It could be a DNS issue. Could be um, could be internet circuit because users don't know to open up Internet Explorer to see if the internet's working. Um, expired domain name. It could be a lot of things if they can't get mail from external recipients. Internal works fine. Um, they can email to each other. For instance, when that when I got this call, I could RDP to the server. I could send I sent a test message to myself. I got it. I replied. Did not get it on the on the address for the server I was working on, but they could send and receive internal fine, all file access shares, they were all fine. Everything else was working fine. The only thing that was not working was they were not getting mail from external recipients. I did not get a bounce back message, which I wouldn't expect to right away in this instance. So in this instance, in any email troubleshooting instance, if you don't get a bounce back message, that email is being held somewhere. It's in a queue somewhere waiting to be delivered. In this case, we could look in the spam filtering server that we host for them. And I saw in there um, insufficient system resources, meaning it could not deliver to the destination server. Even though I, what I was seeing, everything looked fine. I checked the event logs. Nothing jumped out at me at first. And I, I, I kind of was thinking, okay, something's wrong here. <laughs> Definitely something's wrong here. But what is it? Everything looks fine. So I do some Googling. I find an article about back pressure. So I'm researching this. And there's a few event IDs you can look for. And they're all in application events, 1504, 5, 6, and 7. If you have any of these, it'll say, basically, back pressure is being applied. And it'll Four, five, six, and seven. One, five, zero, zero, four, five, six, or seven. It'll tell you why it's being filtered. Either system resources or system process taking up too much time or hard drive space, whatever it is. And it's not hard drive space. It's actually what it means is the size of a log file somewhere might be too big or grown too fast. Now, when you and I had discussed this on the pre-show, how long has this been around for? It's just exchanged 2007. Hmm. I've never seen this. I've never had any server do this. And I've had servers with the hard drives fill up. And I've never seen this. Wow. So, yeah. So I've, I've, I look at this. I figure it out. I find out what's taking up the problem, um, what the problem is. Get it fixed. Okay. Not 10 minutes later, another client calls in. Same exact symptoms. Calling you or calling one? It's calling, well, the tech neck, one of my techs picked up. Okay. But he's sitting five feet from me, I can hear what he's saying. And so he, I hear him looking at it, and I, I walk over, I said, look, search for this event ID. Do you have it? He says, yes. I said, that's amazing. Two calls within 30 minutes of each other, and I have not seen this in the past five years, and I get two calls, different clients, same thing. Now, they were being applied back pressure for different reasons, but still, both of them go back to back pressure. I thought that was amazing. So anyway, if you're having an exchange problem, you don't know what it is. Search application events. 15002456 or 7. Now, when I looked in the exchange logs, I'm I go back a few pages. I'm not gonna search 
500 pages of event logs. I looked back in what's recent. Sure. And I didn't see any errors anywhere. But when I searched for the event ID, I did find it. But it, it didn't seem to be listed every like 10 minutes or five minutes. It was listed like three hours once before or something like that. So, so it just, this it just week says, just started to happen. It just started. It just it just happened one day and hasn't happened since. But for either client, but it was like because it takes clients a while to figure out they're not getting mail. Oh sure, a couple of hours, a couple of days even. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> um, so when I search for the numbers, they, it, it was listed hours ago. I'm like, what? That should be listed every five or ten minutes if it's not allowing mail to be delivered. Sure. But it wasn't. It wasn't. So just remember, this is the kind of thing where you just need to put it back in your mind. Know that if everything seems fine, the things I checked first before looking into this, if somebody tells me they can't get mail externally, ping the mail server. Can I ping the mail server? Mail dot whatever dot whatever, right? Mm -hmm. If I can't ping it, either that's down or maybe the domain name is expired or maybe the problem with DNS. If you can ping it, you know it's good to the router. So it's not DNS, it's not the expired domain name, and it's not. So I could ping it just fine. Um, now, if I can't ping it, I'm going to check the circuit. I'm going to check DNS. I'm going to check. Because um, I've seen I mean, many times DNS service expires. They didn't renew their DNS. So it's not resolving. So, of course, external mail would not know where to go, right? Right. Domain names expire. I've seen domain names expire that need to be renewed. But all that checked out fine. Server looks fine. So just put it back in mind. Everything looks fine. Look, just remember, just remember back pressure. Even if you just Google back pressure exchange, you should come up with enough to get you where you need to be for this. Hmm. Never heard of this. In fact, I'm going to ask the a change guru at work tomorrow. Have you ever heard of back pressure? Curiosity. <laughs> Go with a back brace. Have you ever heard of back pressure? <laughs> I understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ask me if you heard of back pressure. I, I mean, I've heard of it now for sure. Two calls in half an hour. Cool. Um, now, uh, okay, so I have one entertain. We got, a, a, I think, what, one email, two emails? I don't know. Yeah, and if you can read that, uh, my browser is not being complained once again. Okay. Um, first, I want to tell people if they've if they've ever worked in um, help desk area or um, any any anything with tickets, right? Mm -hmm. Where you're creating work tickets, you need to check out Chronicles of George. dot com. Chronicles of George. dot com. This thing is hilarious. It is somebody who worked at a help desk situation, and he just he just documented all the tickets that this guy either works on or creates or has input on, and just they're just funny. They're just funny, especially if if you can relate somehow with having worked help desk or worked with a ticketing system where you're typing in tickets and notes. It, it's just funny. It's just funny. Chroniclesofgeorge.com and go to the um, one of the tabs is George's tickets. Okay. <laughs> George's tickets. And there's like 19 or 20 pages of them. They're pretty funny. At least I thought they were pretty funny. All right, cool. I'll which, definitely check it out because that's the environment that we work in. There's a bunch of different IT the groups in charge of different IT uh, tasks, but we all get them through yeah, cases. It's pretty funny. All right. All right, so we have a uh, an email we can read. Uh, it is from Jason. Uh, he says, I start, I really enjoy the show and appreciate the time that you give to the community. The reason for the email is that I wanted to comment on a discussion about OpenDNS that you had a few shows back. You stated that OpenDNS was a good solution, but it was easily defeated by changing the DNS settings on the client, which is true. But I would offer a simple fix for stopping that type of activity. It can be stopped by setting a rule on the router to block all port 53 requests except from those except from those except for those from router. To do this, you will have to make an outbound rule that blocks an IP range. 